Hello and uh, welcome all of you students once again. So today we are starting with the uh, unit number five uh, from the system programming and the operating system. Uh, previously we have completed the unit number four and uh, all the details related with the uh, what is operating system, then the CPU scheduling, process management, deadlock. Okay, uh, different types of the operating system. That everything details we have covered in the previous lecture. So in this lecture, we'll start with the unit number five and uh, that is the memory management. Okay. So, and uh, related with the topic memory management, today we'll discuss about the introduction to the memory management. What is exactly is the memory? Uh, what is the role of the memory in the computer system? Different types of the memory. What is memory management? And why it is required to perform the memory management okay so as uh, uh, in the previous lecture also uh, we have started the uh, contents of the operating system and also we have discussed what exactly is the operating system as all of you know operating system is nothing but the uh, act as a interface or the communication bridge between the user and the computer hardware as well as along with that it performs the different kind of roles like uh, it performs the process management it perform the resource allocation part in that it perform the role of the memory management, etc., etc. So operating system has to manage and uh, allocate the different hardware resources so that computer system can work properly. And in that one of the functionality of operating system is nothing but the memory management. Okay. And today we are going to discuss uh, the same topic only. Okay. So before you go to the actual point of memory management, First, we need to understand what exactly is the memory or what is the memory in case of the computer. So uh, it is just like the same thing that is a human being having as a human brain. Okay, just like the human brain uh, consists of the storing the different kind of information in that, okay, whatever the you know, past experience human being have, uh, whatever the uh, things he need to do uh, in the present or in the future, that everything, uh, that every part of the information used to be stored in the human brain. That is why we are considering it as our memory. So computer memory is also the same thing, just like the, uh, uh, the brain is there in case of the human being. Okay. So just like our brain used to store the different kind of information, human brain used to store the different kind of information in the similar way. In computer also, you know, to store the different kind of information, data, etc. There is a brain is available and that is nothing but the computer memory. So computer memory used to store the different kind of data, information, etc. Okay. So computer memory is the storage space in the computer where uh, data is to be processed and instruction required for the processing are stored. In the sense what? we do the different program like C language program, C++, Java, and through that program, we used to process some particular data. So that instruction, uh, which is required for processing the data, that instruction uh, also being stored within a memory. Okay, that is the reason where data is used to be processed and instruction required for the processing are stored. So that is the reason here it is being said, computer memory used to store the different kind of data as well as the instruction, okay. And if you see the computer memory, it is being divided into the different small, small parts. Okay. So if you think this as our computer memory, then it is being divided into the different parts. Okay. And each of these part is being referred as a cell or the block. Okay. Each of this particular part is being referred as a cell or, or it can be also referred as a block of memory. Okay. So nowadays in the modern computer system, the memory size is being now increased. You are, you are getting the uh, memory uh, that is in the form of GBs. Okay. So I'm talking about the primary memory that is our random access memory. Okay. And also the another secondary memory is also available, which is now also available in the very huge amount in the terabytes and more than the terabytes it is being available. Okay. But if you compare the primary memory and uh, secondary memory, okay, 
then primary memory is limited as compared with the secondary memory means our ram is limited as compared with our hard disk okay so uh, so whatever the our primary memory is there okay ram that is the random access memory it is divided into the different small parts and each particular part is being referred as your cell or the block okay and each of these cell or block is given the some specific address like 0 1 2 like that kind of addressing mechanism is apply here so that each of the memory location can be identified okay so here that is the reason i have mentioned each location of the cell has the unique address associated with that okay so that is the reason we can consider the memory is an large array of words or bytes where each location is available with its address okay so each of these location is being uh, represented in the form of some okay words or the bytes again you know the bytes being uh, divided into the number of bits 16 okay so in that way uh, the memory is being represented that is our primary memory okay so memory is a large array of words or the bytes where each location is having the certain address assigned with that particular cell or the block so that is the uh, general concept of the memory okay computer memory okay so uh, as you can see uh, now there are the different kinds of memory available uh, along with the computer system so in brief we can just discuss what exactly are which are that different kinds of memory so memory in case of the computer system generally primarily divided into three different types like the cache memory is there then the primary memory or the main memory is there which is also referred as the physical memory also and then secondary memory that is the hard disk where where this our primary memory is nothing but our ram okay and this our secondary memory is nothing but our hard disk that is a magnetic disk okay and also cache memory is also there as a buffer which is being also considered as one of the important memory related to the computer so this cache memories are available in the form of the semiconductor that's is the reason i have shown you the picture here that is available in the form of some semiconductor which are available on your motherboard you must have seen okay so uh, that is the reason here i mentioned cache memory is a very high speed semiconductor memory which speed up the cpu okay we speed up the cpu in the sense this kind of memory generally act as a buffer between the cpu and the main memory this is the memory which is available between the cpu and the main memory okay so then uh, what particular information hold by this particular kind of cache memory so it is used to hold those part of data and a program which are most frequently used by the cpu means generally uh, the data or the information or the program or the website or the different whatever things you browse so that uh, particular part being stored in this particular cache memory okay and that is for what purpose now this particular uh, data or the program which are being frequently used means frequently used in the sense which are being utilized number of times that is used to be stored on this particular buffer as a uh, on the cache memory okay so this particular cache is the small small it's a small memory but it is a faster okay and what exactly it store it store the copies of the data from frequently used main memory location as you know whenever the cpu has to process some particular information or whatever things that is being done by the cpu so for that purpose that particular information or data has to be bring into the primary memory first means onto the ram first and then cpu uh, access that from the ram and process it but in between cpu and the uh, primary memory as a ram there is this cache memory is there okay and what cache memory store so cache memory store some particular information data or the website link which is being accessed number of times understood and what is the importance of this storing it in the cache memory so whenever uh, suppose uh, for the uh day 1 day 2 day 3 every time you access one particular website like you access the wikipedia website okay number of times on the 1 2 3 days so so this wikipedia website is number is nothing but the website which you have access frequently so that particular website data or that website link is stored in this cache memory because whenever next time user access this particular website the particular cpu will not access this from the primary memory but cpu will access it from the cache memory 
so instead of accessing it from the primary memory accessing it from the cache memory it is the more faster okay because which is the closest memory to the cpu here cache memory as compared with the primary memory or the ram that is the reason here i have mentioned it is used to hold those part of data and program which are frequently used by the cpu so it is a smaller memory as compared with the ram also but it is more faster because it is more closer to the cpu we store the copies of the data from frequently used main memory location understood so even if you check the cache of your browser also you will see there you can see there uh, some uh, data or the link or the some instruction are stored in that particular uh, cache memory okay and if you clear that then uh, whenever you go for the accessing the website which you have uh, in the past which you have accessed frequently but uh, after you delete all the cache and next time when you go for the accessing that website then accessing that website will take the more time because you have removed that particular copies of the data from cache memory understood so whatever the uh, browsing we do whatever the information we access data we access copies of data or some link of copies of that data used to be stored on the cache memory so that cpu can access it more fastly as compared with cpu has to access it from the primary memory understood so that is nothing but the cache memory now uh, you, you along with the cache memory you must have heard about the cookies also okay so this bo both the cache memory and the cookies so as i mentioned here both the browser cache and the cookies let you store the information on the visitor computer so whatever website we visit whatever data we access okay that all the information used to be stored in the cache memory understood while you browse the uh, while you browsing on the computer okay and what then what exact what information cookie store now cookie store the information like user id password that all the things related with the uh, tracking of the user okay that information is stored in the cookies so uh, see both of these are used to store the uh, uh some kind of information on the uh, whenever the user uh, operate on the computers but uh, this information is different means cache store the different kind of information where cookie store the different kind of information as i said cache is to store the copies of the information uh, instead of directly accessing accessing it from the primary memory or the main memory uh, information like uh, frequently used uh, data uh, instruction websites that all the things are being stored in the cache memory okay and cookies used to store the information related with the user like its user id password etc etc its login time uh, okay how much time he has browsed something that all the things being stored in the cookies okay so that is the reason here it is mentioned uh, both of these used to store the some uh, information on the visitors computer but they do do it in the different ways okay so here also i have mentioned browser caching help you to speed up your site so that is the reason cache memory used to speed up the computer while cookies help you to store the information about the specific users to identify or track the user so cookie as i said cookies used to store the information related to the user its id its password etc etc okay so both this uh, browser cache memory or the cookies allow us to store the information on the visitors computers okay so this this kind of information is stored in this particular buffer memory or the cache memory okay if you want to see uh, let me show you uh, uh, let me let me show you the particular uh, uh, okay here uh, i want to show you the cache okay here now uh, here i have opened the setting and uh, in the setting you can see here you can easily see here okay you can easily see here uh, let me do it so here you can see the cookies and other site data means it is used to store the our different kind of login ids of different sites okay or different accounts okay password etc and you, here you can see the caches image and the files so it now cache in stored cache is how much 319 mb now 
what is it is saying if you clear this cache memory so i am trying to clear this browsing data in that cache image and files i am trying to clear so what it is saying if you clear this cache memory some sites may load more slowly on your next visit means what on the basis of my past visit whatever the things i have browsed uh, in past in previous days whatever website i visited that website data is being stored in the cache memory okay now whenever i will go for the accessing that site next time so that things will be get access using the cache memory not using the main memory or the primary memory or the ram understood so that is the reason it can speed up the computer but if if i clear these things then next time i have to access that website or the data from the by using which memory ram random access memory or the primary memory that is the reason it is being mentioned if i clear this data your some of the sites may load more slowly means some of the website may load more slowly when whenever i will go for the whenever in the future i will go to visit that particular website understood so that is nothing but the cache memory and the cookies understood so in this cookies here it is mentioned sign you if you clear the cookies it will automatically sign sign out my some of the accounts because you are deleting the particular user id and password from that particular sites understood so that is the reason here uh, i have mentioned the things uh, related with the cache memory and the cookies okay i hope you must have understood the cache memory difference between the cache memory and the cookies okay so cache memory used to store the the particular uh, kind of uh, data here i have mentioned the cache memory used to store what the cache is a smaller and the faster memory we store the copies of the data in the data anything can come in structure uh, there can be a website data or there can be other kind of data so here that is the reason i have mentioned cache is a smaller and faster memory we store the copies of the data from frequently used main memory location understood so that is that is the reason it is also mentioned here it is act as a buffer between the cpu and the main memory so whenever in the future user go for the accessing the same kind of data or the sites it will not access from the main memory but it will be get access from the buffer memory that is from the cache memory okay so that is the cache memory and along with that also we have the cookies so cookies also store the user related information like id is uh, id password etc related to the any kind of user accounts okay so that is the first kind of memory cache memory then second important kind of memory we are having here that is the primary memory okay so that is nothing but your ram or the physical memory also you can call it so then what primary memory holds so primary memory holds the only those data and the instruction on which the computer is currently working so the particular instruction or data being currently get executed by the cpu that data and instruction is contained by whom that data and information contained by the primary memory so primary memory if you say it is having the limited capacity its size is less okay as compared to the secondary secondary memory and it is a kind of volatile memory it is a kind of volatile memory means data is get lost when power get switch off okay so this is nothing but you must have seen the ram also it is also the made up of semiconductor devices like the cache memory okay and uh, as i said the uh, primary memory or the your ram used to store the data and instruction required to be process uh, uh, whatever the data and instruction required for processing or the current execution that is being always stored in the main memory so this is being uh, primary memory is also divided into the some sub categories like the ram and the rom okay so when the when our primary memory get utilized when cpu is executing some instruction okay and the data and instruction which is required for this execution currently that particular part is stored in the primary memory understood so not all the data and all the instruction whatever present on your computer that everything is not uh, store on the primary memory or the ram only which kind of data and instruction or the things are get store on the primary memory only the the data and instruction which is required for the current execution understood or the data or instruction on which the cpu currently working okay so there are the some of the characteristic of the main memories are there like it is a semiconductor memories it is also known as the primary memory it is a volatile memory in the sense the data or information cannot be 
get stored permanently on this kind of memory so whenever the you switch off the computer data get automatically lost and this memory get empty so it is working memory of the computer working memory of the computer in the sense computer only deals with or computer can only directly handle this kind of memory that is the primary memory computer cannot directly interact with the secondary memory that is the hard disk okay so that is the reason it is more close to the cpu it is more close to the cpu that is the reason it is a faster than secondary memory and computer cannot run without the ram or the primary memory if you try to run your computer by removing the ram then you must have understood or experience it gives the beep kind of sound it indicate that ram is not present there understood so even if secondary memory is not there your your computer may get start but even you they but if you don't have the primary memory or the ram in that case you, your computer will never get start understood so then we have the third kind of memory that is the secondary memory that is nothing but our hard disk here i have shown you in the picture also okay so this type of memory is also known as the external memory or non volatile non volatile in the sense once you store the data on that uh, memory it cannot be get uh, eliminated even the you switch off the computer or power goes off so that is it is more away from the cpu okay it is more away from the cpu that is it is slower than the main memory so it is used to store the data information permanently okay that is the reason it is considered the non volatile where in case of the primary memory we have seen it is used to store the data or information for temporary purpose and the time when the cpu is executing or operating on that data and instruction only that data and information store on the primary memory but here whatever the data information that you want to store permanently it can be stored on the hard disk so whenever you uh, write some program on computer like c program if you write and whenever you save it it gets stored on the hard disk but whenever we go for the execution when you go for the execution that particular program is being uh, that program is being bring into the your main memory okay and then cpu uh, execute that particular program understood so cpu directly does not access this memory as i said instead they are accessed via the input output routines means that particular data or the program which is stored on the hard disk that has to be brought into the primary memory or the main memory okay the content of secondary memories are first transferred to the main memory as i said and then cpu access it okay as i should uh, as we have discussed here so various example of secondary memory we can hard disk cd rom dvd these are all the considered as a kind of secondary memory or the external memories okay so accordingly uh, we have the different characteristic related with the uh, secondary memory okay like these are the magnetic and optical memories these are not the semiconductor memories as compared with our primary memories these are what kind of memories magnetic and the optical memories so these are being also referred as a backup memories it is a non volatile memory data is permanently stored even if the power is switched off as we have discussed so it is used for the storage of data permanently on the computer computer may run without this secondary memory but computer may not be run or it is not possible to run the computer if you don't have the primary memory or the ram and it is more away from the cpu that is the reason it is slower than our cpu uh, slower than our primary memory because primary memory is more close to the cpu okay now so i hope all of you understood the basic of uh, memory in case of the computer and uh, uh, different kind of memory and their role okay now next uh, let's discuss something more about the memory okay as i already we have discussed the computer memory is being uh, uh, computer memory is basically known as the collection of data that is being represented in the binary format okay so whenever the uh, we try to store some information uh, then in the computer memory that is a primary memory that information is stored only in the form of the some binary format understood that is the reason uh, it is being mentioned here computer memory is a uh, collection of data that is being represented in the binary format okay so main memory is being also referred as a physical memory that is the internal memory of the computer now why this kind of memory is referred as a main the reason also i have mentioned the word main is used to distinguish it from the external mass storage 
the word main used to differentiate it from the our hard disk memory means secondary memory understood that is the reason it is mentioned here the word main used to distinguish it from the external mass storage device such as a disk drive that is our hard disk okay or uh, other uh, floppy drive you can say or the pen drive also comes under the external mass storage okay so you have to differentiate from all this kind of storage the primary memory is being referred as a main memory okay so it is being also referred as a ram that already we have discussed okay the computer is able to change only data that is in the main memory as i said computer can only handle this primary memory directly it cannot handle the external mass storage directly so in order to handle the external mass storage user presence is required here okay so that is the reason it is mentioned here computer is able to change only the data that is stored in the available in the main memory okay so therefore every program we execute and every file we access must be copied from the storage device into the main memory so whatever thing we access or whatever things we try to execute that everything has to be bring into the main memory first then and then only you can do the processing of that particular data or the instruction okay so uh, related with the uh, memory also uh, related with the loading at that part there is a two concept are there that is the dynamic loading and dynamic linking okay so as i said all the programs or data are loaded in the main memory for the execution okay now as i said our primary memory is limited what primary memory is a limited kind of memory so sometimes the complete program is loaded into the memory if your program is small then that whole program can be loaded into the ram okay but sometimes what happen size of your program used to be very large and that is the reason sometimes we can load only the certain parts of that program as a routine into the main memory okay when we cannot load whole program into the ram or the main memory when the size of your program is very large then what can be done when your size of the program is very large so when the size of your program is very large then that particular program some of the part of that program is loaded into the memory means that whole program is not loaded into memory uh, at the same time part by part routine by routine the parts of that programs are loaded into the ram okay so here that is the reason i have mentioned i as you can see sometimes the complete program is loaded into the main memory when the program size is small but sometimes a certain part of routine of the program is loaded into the main memory only when it is called by the program and this loading of particular certain parts of the program program uh, time by time that is called as a dynamic loading okay means what when the size of the program is large ram cannot ram, ram cannot uh, ram cannot be accord accommodate all that large program at a time then how this program can be loaded into the ram then then part by part whenever some part of that program is required in the ram for execution then that particular part is get called that is the reason it is being mentioned uh, uh, sometimes the certain part of routine of the program is loaded into the main memory only when it is called okay so when program is large only some part of that program is loaded into the memory whenever it is called okay and this particular particular kind of loading of the program into the ram loading of the program into the ram part by part or routine by routine based on the calling that is called as a dynamic loading that is called as our dynamic loading and because of this the performance of the particular computer system can be get increased okay so same like a dynamic loading there is a dynamic linking because you know the particular program is having different small uh, different sub programs in that or on the particular program other program also used to be depend okay on particular program other different program may used to be depends that is the reason here i have mentioned also at the time one program is dependent on some other program now in this case rather than loading all the dependent programs the cpu link the dependent program to the main executing program when it is required okay suppose this is your main program okay on on this main program there are the some small programs are dependent okay 
there are some small programs are dependent like this kind of programs okay so uh, also at the time one program is depend on some other program okay means this is your main program and uh, no, okay now this main program also requires this small programs also as i mentioned loading all the dependent programs the cpu link the dependent programs to the main existing program means if we consider all this small program has a dependent program on this main program okay then cpu load first this main program okay and then CPU, uh, what what happen then the cpu link these dependent programs to these main programs okay so linking of dependent program with the main program what linking of dependent program with the main program if this if this is your main program and this is your dependent programs so linking of main program with the dependent program okay while execution of the program that particular mechanism is mechanism is called as a dynamic linking okay so what is the dynamic linking when there are the main program is there and the, uh, on that main program some other dependent programs are also there then there is a need of linking of all these dependent program and the main program and this linking of dependent program and the main program that is called as a dynamic Pro, uh, dynamic linking so same thing i have mentioned also at the time one program is depend on some other programs in such case rather than loading all the dependent programs the cpu link the dependent program to the main executing program okay when cpu required it and that is called as a dynamic linking okay so if i said uh, like uh, this is your main program as i told you and on this main program there are some other programs like this small small program which are dependent programs okay so linking of this dependent programs with the main program that is called as a dynamic linking and accordingly the cpu call this dependent programs whenever it is required okay so that is a related part with the loading and the linking uh, related to the memory okay now before we uh, now you must have understood the concept of memory now before we start with the what exactly is the memory management before that we need to clear something more some more things related with the computer system memory and that is the reason here i have mentioned in order to understand the memory management we have to make everything clear about how data is being stored in the computer system means how data is being stored on the computer memory now as we know the machine understand which particular language binary language that is zero and one language understood so that is the reason the computer convert the every data into the binary language first and then it store that data into the memory understood what task the computer first does computer does the first task that is a converting that particular data which is written in the natural language or in the higher level language into the which language it convert binary language and then this converted binary language things get stored in the primary memory okay that means if you have the program line like this int alpha equal to 10 then the computer convert this particular part into the binary language into the 0 and 1 and then computer store it into the memory blocks or the on the memory cells understood so that is the thing that you need to understand so that is the part that you need to understand how the actual data is being stored on the computer system memory okay how it store computer first convert it into the binary format and then this binary format data gets stored onto the memory blocks okay now if you take the if you try to understand this part with the example so if you see this representation of for example int i equal to 10 now what is the binary representation of 10 binary representation of 10 is what 1010 what 1010 now if you consider here the 32 bit system okay what 32 bit system the size of int is 2 byte that is how much 16 bit one one byte is the 8 bit so two bytes in the set 16 bits and this 16 bit is nothing but the one memory block store the one bit one bit. now this 16 bit will get store how this 16 bit will get store on the 16 different memory blocks understood here i have shown you these are the 16 now for this program to get store how many 
how many memory location is going to be required 16 bits how why the 16 bit because int is having the size of 2 bytes understood 2 byte equal to 16 bit means and each memory block store how many bits one bit that is the reason how many memory location will required 16 memory location like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 16 and you can see last four memory location it is storing the 1010 1, that is the representation of this 10 because binary format binary representation of 10 is what 1010 1, 0. and here you can see so each of this block each of this block is referred as a memory block or one memory block understood or it is also referred as a cell understood so that is the reason in the previous part one definition of memory we have seen uh one definition of memory that we have seen that is what the memory is memory is a large array of words or the bytes where each location with its address so that is the thing we have shown you i have shown you here memory is what large array of large array of words or bytes where these bytes bytes being converted into the bits okay this is nothing but the each of the bit which which represents the which represent the one memory block understood so here the base on the your uh, uh, whether your system is the 32 bit or the 64 bit accordingly memory gate memory gate uh, mem uh, memory gate divided into the different blocks okay like this as i shown you here understood and according to the range of values uh, that can be stored get decide so in case of the 32 bit system the range of values that can be stored using the memory array is from 32768 from minus 32768 to the plus 32767 understood accordingly the blocks of the memory get their addresses as i said each of these block is having certain addresses so that the data get data can be get stored on this particular memory systematically understood so that is the basic thing related to the memory and how the data gets stored on the memory that all of you must have understood okay now here we will start with the our points of what exactly is the memory management okay so here our part of the memory management start so first we'll discuss what exactly is the definition of memory management and then we'll try to uh, discuss it in the more detailed way so here memory management is the functionality of operating system that already i told you it is the one of the great role performed by the operating system that is what managing the memory so memory management is the functionality of operating system which handle or manage primary memory which memory it manage primary memory that is your random access memory how by moving the process back and forth between the main memory and the disk by how moving the process back and forth in the sense suppose let me show you this is your this is your cpu okay this is your main memory and this is your secondary memory that is a disk now whenever cpu want to execute something the data or instruction from the secondary memory being access in the main memory and from main memory it is being go to the cpu understood again when the cpu finish its processing again that data goes on to the secondary memory or whenever main memory thinks that that particular some particular data or instruction for some particular data or instruction there is a no need to be stored in the main memory then that data or instruction gets stored gets uh, sent into the prime uh, secondary memory understood that is the reason here it is being said memory management is the functionality of operating system who manage the memory operating system that is the reason it is said memory management is the functionality of operating system which handle or manages the primary memory how it manages or handle the primary memory by moving the particular data or instruction or by moving some process between the main memory and the 
secondary memory disk is our secondary memory so how the operating system manage the memory by continuously by continuously moving the data from this main memory or this is a secondary memory by moving the data from secondary memory to the main memory secondary uh, sorry main memory to the secondary memory secondary memory to the main memory so this continuous interaction goes on between the main memory and the secondary memory in order to transfer the data from main memory to the secondary memory then from secondary memory to the main memory so when when data will be sent from when data will be sent from secondary memory to the main memory when certain data or instruction has to be executed by cpu then that data has to be that data has to be bring from secondary memory to the main memory when cpu finish its execution then and that particular data or instruction for the some particular data or instruction need not know there should not be any data or instruction in the main memory then at that time that data or instruction can be transferred into the secondary memory okay let me tell you once again suppose this is your cpu okay this is your main memory this is your secondary memory now when when the data will be transferred from or some process will be transferred from secondary memory to the main memory whenever cpu want to execute that okay now when the cpu finishes execution again that data or information again store into the secondary memory so in this way that is the reason here it is being mentioned the memory management the functionality of operating system which handle or manages primary memory how it manage how it manages or handle the primary memory by moving processes processes in the data instruction whatever you think by moving the processes back and forth back and forth in the sense by transferring it to the secondary memory and by receiving it into the by receiving it from the secondary memory that is the reason it is mentioned by moving it back and forth back and forth in the sense back backward and the forward between the main memory and the disk in the sense secondary memory so that is the nothing but the memory management definition okay what is it memory management is the functionality of operating system which handle or manage the primary memory by moving the some data instruction or processes back and forth between the main memory and the secondary memory okay now we now to manage this main memory as i said our operating system is made with the help of different kind of small small modules like in order to handle the process process scheduling or in order to do the cpu scheduling there is a scheduler module is there similarly in order to do the memory management there is a memory management module or small software there is, is there uh, which is the part of your operating system because operating system is being made by combining different software together okay by combining different software modules together so in order to manage the memory main memory a uh, software module required that is the memory memory management module is required okay which is a part of your operating system and operating system with the help of this memory management module used to manage the main memory okay so why we need to manage the main memory that is the another important thing here okay why we need to manage the main memory okay now one of the important reason that you need to manage the main memory now why we need why there is a no need to manage the secondary memory and why we need to manage the primary memory only the one important reason behind that is what the computer primary memory is limited versus the secondary memory okay if you see today normally the ram is available in the number of gbs 8 gb 4 gb more than 8 gb also okay but if you see the secondary memory it is available in the 500 gb 1000 gb terabytes like that kind of things understood so as a primary memory is limited that is the reason we have to manage it careful the resources which you are having limited the resources which are having limited that you have to handle with care that you have to manage carefully so that certain operation can be performed it with uh, in the proper manner secondary memory is available in the huge amount that is the reason there is no need to manage it understood but primary memory is available limited that is the reason we have to manage it manage it in the sense what we have to handle it in a such a way that all the programs process that want to execute that can be get accommodated or that can be get stored in this primary memory understood but as you know 
all the data programs cannot be stored at a time in the primary memory that is the reason the data or program which is needed by the cpu for current execution only that data or information get stored in the primary memory understood now that is the reason as you can see if you if you if you can take the uh, another example we will take you know to understand this but here you need to understand as a primary memory is limited that is the reason we have to manage it carefully understood and how we are managing it we are managing it by continuous interaction between the secondary memory and the primary memory means whatever information that is not needed there in the primary memory that we store it to the secondary memory the information which is required in the primary memory for the cpu uh, for the cpu execution purpose whenever cpu want to execute some particular task only then we used to bring that data or information from secondary memory into the primary memory other time that data or information used to be stored in the secondary memory understood so the same thing i have mentioned here the reality of most of the computer and storage deployment is that all type of computer memory are considered constrained by upper limit means the computer memory is constrained by upper limit in the sense the computer memory in the sense primary memory is limited understood primary memory is limited that is the reality okay so no resources on the modern system perhaps as a constraint as a memory so most constrained part of our computer system or limited part of computer system is nothing but the primary memory okay and which is always needed by the operating system which is always needed by the uh, different application which is always needed by the different storage for the execution purpose because cpu will only execute the data information program application only when it is present in your primary memory okay so without unlimited memory at some point memory is fully consumed then that time our uh, system may not work properly as you can see primary memory is limited okay so if you try to run maximum number of task or maximum number of process on your computer system then your computer system may not get work properly okay what is the reason because you cannot execute all the tasks all the instruction program at a time using the primary memory because it is limited and that is the reason you must have experienced some uh, some particular things on the computer some errors on the computer that primary memory is remaining very less okay or your primary memory is available very less that kind of error notification you must have seen okay or uh, your your ram is very less your some of the task may not get executed or your remaining primary memory is very less that kind of notification you must have seen understood so since the beginning of the information technology this is there is a one challenge that is related with the memory part handling or managing this memory because it is available in the limited amount okay so that is the reason the things which are available in the limited amount that particular things or the resources need to be managed carefully understood it is not possible to store all the data information within a primary memory understood that is the reason some of the data which is required you store it here when it's work finished you transfer it into the secondary memory understood so in this way you manage the uh, operating system manage your primary memory so you can take the example of uh, our real life example if you take the example of bank now if we see the space of the bank in the bank you can see that there is a huge space inside the bank but if you see the atm now in the atm small boxes are being made small boxes or small rooms are there in the atm where if the 50 people are there can all the 50 people enter inside this atm room no but if that all the 50 people want to enter the bank main space they can enter but can they enter inside the atm room no in the atm room only five to two to five people can enter once one people finish its work it goes outside and other people come inside same is thing there in case of the primary memory whenever the data or information is required for the execution by the cpu that data or information is brought into the primary memory from secondary memory whenever that data or instruction get executed it is get transferred into the secondary memory and this is nothing but the called as a memory management 
understood that is called as what memory management which is nothing but handling or managing the primary memory so that system can run properly and that is the called as a that is called as a memory management functionality which is performed by the operating system okay i hope you must have understood why we need to manage the primary memory okay so it is the operating in case of the operating system memory management is the one of the important function uh, in operating system memory management is the function responsible for what managing the computer's primary memory so managing the computer primary memory or the ram that is called as a memory management okay so if there are the different ways of managing the memory okay like number of ways we will discuss here the memory management function keep the track of status of each memory location whether it is allocated or free as i said if there is a 4 gb of memory that 4 gb of memory is been divided into the number of blocks cells now one of the important part which is performed by as a part of the memory management is what keeping track of keeping track of what which memory blocks are allocated and which are free okay then also it determine how memory is allocated among the computing process deciding which gets memory when they receive it how much they are allowed means if there are the five process want to utilize the primary memory want to execute then out of that five which process will get the access of memory so out of that five the particular process which is having the higher priority that process will get the access of the memory and that process will get access to the particular memory blocks for the execution purpose by the cpu so determining which process should be get allocated on the memory means if there are the multiple process want to be stored on the memory then out of that multiple process which to be choose the which one is having the higher priority that will be get choose that is the important functionality is also being performed as a part of the memory management okay so same thing i have mentioned here it determines how memory is allocated among the computing process computing means if there are the multiple process want to get store on the memory okay then when as a part of the memory management next thing that is being get done is what when memory is allocated it determines which memory location will be get assigned as i said number of cells being created then on which particular memory block certain process will get allocated or certain data will get stored that decision also need to be done as a part of the memory management also it track it keep the track of where when particular memory block will get free where or when particular memory block will get unallocated and updation of all that status of uh, allocated memory unallocated memory free memory that everything is being done as a part of the memory management okay so this technique decide which process will get memory at what time also memory management technique also need to decide if there are the five process then if the p1 got the memory then when will the p2 will get the memory that is the reason this technique decide which process will get memory at what time okay so that all the consideration or management is also done as a part of the memory management it also keep keep the count of how much memory can be allocated to the process means what is the requirement of memory for the particular process and how much memory can be allocated for that process that all the count is also maintained by the memory management as a part of the memory management okay as it keep track of everything so whenever some memory get free or unallocated unallocated the updation of that is updation of that as a status is also being done so that is already we have discussed so as a part of the memory management all these things need to be done keeping the track of status of memory location whether it is allocated or free then uh, deciding which process will get the memory first which will get the latter one then deciding which which locations of the memory are already allocated okay then updating the status of free unallocated allocated status also then deciding which process will get the memory at what time so doing all this kind of management that is nothing but the memory management which is being happen as a function of our operating system and who is doing all this thing operating system with the help of which module memory management module okay so there are the some on all the whatever the discussion we have done on the basis of that some some reasons or uh, uh, related with the uh, why we uh, Uh, related with the 
memory management technique uh, why there is a need of the memory management uh, why why the operating system should do the memory management related with that some reasons we have i have mentioned here at our based on our discussion like some reasons as i said first reason this technique helps to help us in placing the program in memory in such a way that so that memory is utilized at its full extent okay so as i said through the memory management technique the care is being taken that no block of the memory should remain unused all the blocks or the cells of the memory get utilized properly that can be done with the help of memory management okay so this technique also help to protect the different process from each other so that they cannot interfere with each other's operation suppose p1 process p1 is stored on this on this block now as i said this this particular fragmentation of memory is needed because suppose there is another process p2 now if you don't do this fragmentation or if you if you just arrange the memory like this this as your main memory without dividing it to the blocks then your your p1 p2 this is p1 p2 may interfere with each other's operation but here there is a separation between the p1 and p2 p1 is here and p2 is here so this is, that is the same point i have mentioned here this technique helps to protect different process from each other so that do not interfere with each other operation so because of this fragmentation of memory it become possible that each each particular process will get their separate block if they get separate block they will not interfere with each other okay it help us to allocate the space to the different application and the routines so each different application that you run on the computer for each of that separate memory get allocated okay so these techniques allow you to check how much memory need to be allocated to the process that decide which process should get memory at what time that already in the previous slide also we have discussed how much memory is needed for the particular process okay and which process should get memory that everything can be done with the help of the memory man it also keep the track of each memory location whether it is free or allocated so that also we have discussed so for all this reason the memory management required to be done okay so that is all the thing that we want to discuss today okay and we have already finished the part that is what exactly is the memory different types of the memory need of the memory okay and uh, why we need to do the memory management okay now even if if you if, if you want to see i can show you on our computer system on my computer system here okay you can see if i just uh, press the control, control alt delete okay and here you can see the task manager and in the task manager you can easily see here what are the processes or app running on my computer system and how much memory it is being consumed by them so you can see adop acrobat reader is the one application is running okay now here you can see how much memory it is being utilized by that how much memory 6676 mb google chrome is running it is consuming 418 mb microsoft excel is running it is consuming 1.6 mb notepad 0.1 task manager itself 21.6 mb zoom itself 88 understood so this is the way okay this is the way so that is the we are discussing so which are the processes consuming how much amount of memory keeping track of all these thing that is also the part of the memory management okay so i hope all of you have understood whatever the things we have discussed regarding the memory management okay now today we have discussed the what is memory different types of memory how to manage the memory okay now in the next lecture we are going to discuss about the which are the different techniques okay with the help of which different techniques memory management can be done by the operating system that we are going to discuss in the next lecture okay so that that's it from the today lecture i hope all of you understood all the things if you have any doubt please comment in the comment section okay thank you all of you